Uh, greetings to you all. My name is Aluk Mbom. I will be taking you through uh, the third lesson of the information system security topic. Uh, this lesson is about risk management and business continuity planning. It is the last lesson of this topic uh, and a very important aspect or subtopic of the MIS uh, syllabus. So, uh, like I've said, it is risk management. and business continuity planning. Planning. That is what is normally abbreviated as BCP. So we start by talking about risk management. What is risk management? Before we can even explain what risk management is, we need to understand, the students need to understand what risk is all about. Risk refers to uh, the participation of an activity that is not certain. When an I information system personnel carries out an activity and he or she is not sure of the outcome of that activity, then we are talking about risk. Now, when, when we look at risk in the society, we can have a number of examples of risk, especially uh, in the ICT field. Using a computer system without an antivirus is uh, a risk. Uh, using a database, or setting up a database in a database server without a backup is talking about risk. So because of all these risks, organizations decided to manage uh, the particular risks because we cannot eliminate risks. Uh, a good example is when we say we are setting up the internet uh, in our organizations. Internet is known to come with computer viruses. So we cannot avoid to set up the internet because it comes with computer viruses. We will install the internet, but now we have to manage that particular risk. That's what we are calling risk management. So in, in, in brief, risk management is the technique uh, for identifying, assessing, and mitigating the operational risk. There are three points there. Identifying, assessing, and mitigating the operational risk. That's what we are calling risk management. So in the society today, we have practical or we have real world risks. If you know somebody, if somebody knows that whatever I'm doing is likely to result into a risk, so I identify the risk, then I look at the impact of that risk, then I reduce that impact. So in ICT, what does risk management entail? When, when you look at an activity that you're doing, then you say that this activity may result into a risk. The, already you have identified the risk. Then when you assess the risk, assessing the risk, risk assessment, talks about uh, looking at the impact of that particular risk. The impact of the risk on the people, the impact of the risk on the IT-based activities. And, and you are trying to suggest how is that risk going to be mit mitigated. So in assessing the risk, we are looking at the impact and recommendations. Like people will say that if, if a computer virus infects our hard disk, uh, is it going to result into data loss? Is it going to result into data inaccessibility? In that case, we are looking at the impact of that risk. And then we recommend we recommend how can we reduce the risk? We don't normally eliminate risks. Risk mitigation talks about the use of the recommendations that have been uh, defined to reduce impact of risk. Reduce or uh, we normally call reduce impact of risk. That is what mitigation is all about. We cannot completely eliminate risks. Uh, just like in the real world scenario, thieves can steal from us. Walking into walking along a corridor or along a road at night and it is dark is a risk. And we cannot eliminate the thieves. We can only reduce the impact caused by those particular thieves. So when we talk about risk mitigation, a good example again is the one for computer viruses. 
I've said installing the internet is a risk because it can introduce the computer viruses. But can we be able to say that we are eliminating the effect of computer viruses completely? It is not possible. The computer viruses will be there with us. We only reduce their impact. So that is what risk mitigation is. And we have risk mitigation techniques. A number of risk mitigation techniques exist. Uh, the techniques for mitigation. A number of mitigation techniques uh, exist. Mitigation. That is a wrong spelling. We have mitigation. One of the techniques there is risk avoidance. Now, risk avoidance is a strategy or technique which tells us that do not participate in the activity that may lead to the risk. That is what we are calling risk avoidance. The information systems personnel or organizations employees or even the organization itself tries not to participate in the activity that will result into the risk. But we are told it is not one of the best strategies because you, if you don't participate in that activity, it may come with losses in the organization. A good example, which we can use to, re, to, to explain risk avoidance, is where an organization decides not to set up the internet. And, and because the world is now based on the internet and you have decided not to set up the internet in your organization, you will not gain, you will not achieve from what other people are achieving. So as much as risk avoidance is helping us to reduce the impact of the risk, it is not one of the best strategies. Number two, risk assumption. In risk assumption, we are assuming. We are ignoring the risk and continuing to work. We normally say that in risk assumption, uh, for example, a computer is infected by a virus. And, and you just assume that the virus is there and you continue working. It is a strategy that is used for small risks. You, you are assuming that the risk occurred and you continue with your work. Number three is what we call risk transfer. That is another strategy, risk transfer. You are transferring the risk to a third party. The risk has occurred as far as you are concerned, but you are now saying the third party should be able to sort out that risk. A good example is the case with insurance. Uh, when we say that we, we have our computers have gotten destroyed, but, but now we, we are not taking responsibility for the, for, the, for the activity that has actually occurred. Now, we also have what we are calling risk limitation. Limitation. Uh, in risk limitation, we are trying to reduce the impact. We are trying to re, uh, reduce the adverse impact. We are putting in controls to limit that risk. Assuming that there, we know very well that there could be data corruption. Uh, so what we do, we put in some controls just to reduce the possibility of data corruption. That is what we call risk limitation. Those are the strategies that we can use to avoid or mitigate risks. Now, we, we, based on that, uh, let us take risks now to the ICT environment, as much as we have known the strategies. In the ICT environment, there are so many risks, risks of hacking, risks of uh, data loss because of computer viruses. How will organizations ensure that their activities are always online? Remember, risk is one of the factors that affects the continuity of our activities. Risk leads to what we call <coughs> downtime. So every organization must set up a risk management department or must set up what we call the risk management branch of the organization. As much as we use data, digital data is so vulnerable and it is vulnerable to threats. Threats lead to risks. So in risk management, we normally have what we call principles of risk management, principles of risk management. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to get yourself a copy of our professionally prepared study text and revision partners. 
Visit our shop along Tomboya Street, Pioneer House, third floor, opposite fire station. <laughs>